The purpose of this video is to demonstrate how back orders are handled in Odoo's version 12. So the first thing we want to look at is our inventory. If I go to inventory and I look at our product, we'll call it, we have this uh, called uh, big product actually it's called, there it is. And we'll see we have one unit on hand for sale and we're able to sell one unit. Now, when I go to my sales app and I create an order, say an order comes in and it's for the big product and I want to sell two units. First, Odoo will tell me you want to sell two but you only have one unit available in this warehouse. I say that's fine. I sell two anyways. I confirm the order and it generates the delivery order here automatically to deliver two units. Now, when I go look at the sales app here, I should mention other information, you'll see that there's a policy I can set. And I'm gonna, I already confirmed this one, so I'm gonna create a new one. But you'll see shipping policy, deliver each product when available or deliver, deliver all products at once. So this functionality here is really gonna determine how the system behaves when it comes to telling your warehouse employees or whoever is responsible for picking the product when to pick or when an order is ready to go. If I leave it as deliver each product when available, Odoo will essentially say, you, if you have two units that you sold and you only have one unit on hand, still allow and let my warehouse employees know that they have one order that needs to be processed and shipped, despite the fact that we still have an outstanding quantity in the example that I'm about to show you, that's one, which is not available and therefore will create a back order to manage it and you know, fulfill it once it arrives in our warehouse. So in that example where I sold two units, right, sale order 30, remember that? So we sold two units. If I go to inventory right now and I look at delivery orders, 10 to process, you'll see at the bottom here, source document, sale order 30, it's marked as ready and it's in the 10 to process. So your warehouse employees, when they need to know what, what needs to be acted on, what is a, what's ready to be processed, what's ready to go, they'll click that green button there. And when they go down here, you'll see that we have Azure, the big product, initial demand is two, we have one quantity reserved right now, ready to go out the door. And you'll see it's ready to ship, and the next logical step is to validate it. They'll be able to go print their picking, just like that. They'll see, go pick one product, Note, not all products could not be reserved. Why? Because of course it's not on hand yet. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead, check availability, again, nothing, we'll validate and we'll process it. Now, it says that you've, you're about to process one unit of this. However, you have processed less products than the initial demand. So if we expect to fulfill this at a later date, create the back order. If we wanna wash it off and, and you know, and just ship it anyways and adjust the sale order, we can create no back order. But we'll go ahead and we'll create the back order. Now, you'll see that this shipped. Warehouse out 23, one unit of big product has been shipped. When I go back to my inventory overview, you'll see that there are now nine to process. And if we go look at what's to process, we'll see sale order 30 as a source document, oops, is not available. However, if I look at what's waiting, set order 30 is now in the waiting line. Why? You'll see it's a back order of this one, and you'll see it's for one unit of the big product. Now, let's go purchase this, the big product, and pretend uh, it comes in. Confirm. Receive, validate, and now in inventory, if I run my scheduler, which you can set to run however often you want, and watch this, we're about to go to 10. There it is, it actually checked and there's other ones as well. So now it's up to 11. So your, your inventory team in real time, and again, I did this manually, but you can set the schedule to run every minute, every five minutes. I'll show you that at the end of the video here. Um, once it runs, it essentially checks and says, every time this runs, it checks your 
your stock, it checks a bunch of other apps as well, but in this example, it checks what orders need to go out and what do we have in stock. And it says, oh, we have this order needs to go out, we're waiting on this product, and it looks like it's in stock. Market is ready to process and reserve that quantity. And now when we go drill into the green, we search 30, you'll see it's ready. So it's now automatically back in the list, and it's the one that's a back order, and again, we'll validate and ship this product out the door. And just like that, now tend to process. As far as the scheduler goes, it's actually called the scheduled action. It's procurement run scheduler. You'll see here, you can set it right now in the demos, it runs every day, but we can set it to run every down to every you know, 0.5 of a minute if you want to, every 30 seconds. The recommended quantity is every one minute if you want it in as real time as possible, um, just because of the rate at which, you know, it, when it calls, it is, it's a server resource, right? It, it requires an action to be executed in. To run it in real time, definitely, it doesn't make much sense. It's every minute is usually sufficient. Things will be updated uh, in, when it comes to reserving stock for orders that need to be fulfilled, or reserving stock for manufacturing orders that need to be executed, or checking to see, based on any reordering rules we have in the system, against stock levels, do we need to order more of what, who's the vendor, you might have. If you need me to drill deeper, let me know. I'll be happy to uh, elaborate. Thanks so much and have a great day.